This video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your health care provider before making any changes to your health. Hey beautiful soul, it's Jacqueline here from the Lost Labia Chronicles where I talk about all things lichen sclerosis. So if you have lichen sclerosis and want to empower yourself with information um, so that you can kind of, you know, find acceptance and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to this channel and definitely keep on watching. And if you have a friend or family member with lichen sclerosis and you want to learn more about the disease, as well as the physical and mental health components of living with lichen sclerosis so that you can better support them, then also please subscribe to my channel and please share this channel with them. Okay, so I realized that when I started this channel, I kind of just dove right in. Um, at that point, I had had my blog for about seven months, so I kind of realized maybe some foundational videos will be helpful to have, especially for folks that are coming here for the first time. Um, so in today's video, that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to go back to the fundamentals and I'm going to address two questions. Those being what is lichen sclerosis and is lichen sclerosis serious? So if you find any of the information in this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, a like, and leave a comment if you feel comfortable doing so. Okay, so let's begin with the question, what is lichen sclerosis? So to answer this question, I'm going to kind of draw on the consensus that I see in the medical literature to date. So I am filming this in January 2022. Gotta be careful I don't say 2021. I always have a difficult time when we change years. I kind of get stuck in the old year for a while. So I am filming this. It is January 2022. And so please note that things may change as research and science progress. So right now, lichen sclerosis is considered to be a chronic inflammatory skin disease that typically affects the genitals, so the vulva, the anus, the penis, but it can also affect the extra genital skin. So some folks have lichen sclerosis on their arms, their abdomen, their thighs, etc. In this video, I am talking about vulvar lichen sclerosis. So it is widely considered to be a autoimmune disease with a genetic component. Although that genetic component hasn't really yet been fleshed out or, you know, there's not much detail there, but they think that there's a genetic component. So that is something to note. Finally, lichen sclerosis is a disease that sits kind of, or at least vulvar lichen sclerosis, I should say, sits at the intersection of dermatology and gynecology. Gynecology because it affects the vulva and then dermatology because it affects the skin of the vulva. So some folks get seen and followed and diagnosed by gynecologists, other by dermatologists, uh, urogynecologists, etc. According to Dr. Krapf and Dr. Goldstein, who work at the Center for Vulvovaginal Disorders, um, what they suspect is going on in the case of lichen sclerosis is that there exists a protein or a collection of proteins in the basement layer of the vulva that the body identifies as not self. Now, when our bodies identify something as not self, this gets coded or interpreted as they're kind of being an intruder or a threat, a danger to the body, to the healthy, you know, to the safety of your body. And so it sees it as something that it needs to get rid of, right? So there's an intruder. We want to expel that intruder from the body so that we can keep the body healthy and safe. Now, when our bodies kind of code this protein as not self, it creates this inflammatory reaction in order to deal with this not self kind of intruder. And this, these high levels of inflammation and this inflammatory response is what's responsible for the kind of textural changes to the vulva. So that's where we're getting this sclerotic um, fibrotic tissue that hardening, all of those architectural changes, right? So the, the vulvar tissue gets thick, it starts to pull back and atrophy and fuse. So, and all of this can cause things like tearing and burning and um, 
stinging, itch, etc. So that's what they kind of suspect is going on in the background and what's responsible for the symptoms that folks with lichen sclerosis have. Now, if you want more details on this, I super highly recommend that you check out their webinar um, that's on YouTube. So I will link that in the description box below if you want more details on their work. All right, so let's talk about symptoms for a minute. What are the symptoms that come with lichen sclerosis? So there can be generalized pain and discomfort. You may have itching, which can range from mild and kind of sporadic to severe, um, severe enough that some folks say that they wake up in the middle of the night and there's blood in their underwear or holes in their underwear from itching so, or scratching so much because the itch is so severe, so intense, so relentless. Um, if you listen to Lichen Sclerosis podcast, um, of one of her earlier episodes, she, she calls her itch persistent patty, which I, is always kind of stuck and I think it sticks in a lot of people's minds. So that persistent itch. There is also dyspareunia, which is pain with sex. There are changes to the um, texture of the skin. So there is skin thickening. Um, and there can be architectural changes such as atrophy, fusing, uh, phimosis. Now, if you're new here and um, not well acquainted with these terms and what they mean, I do have a video, a couple of videos on lichen sclerosis terminology. I will link those in the description box below and I highly recommend you checking those out because I go into detail about um, words like phimosis, fusing, atrophy, etc. So there are those types of changes. Then there are also changes to the color of the skin. So frequently there will be whiteness or kind of like white patches that kind of stand out. There can also be um, bruising. And then some folks have trouble urinating or with bowel movements if they also have the, um, the lichen sclerosis in the anal area as well. So those are some of the main symptoms that come with lichen sclerosis. And now importantly, you don't need to have each and every one of these symptoms in order to be diagnosed with or to have lichen sclerosis. Some people only have the itch. Other people like myself, their primary symptom is pain with sex, um, tearing and fissures. Um, so those are my main symptoms for I'd say the first nine years and itch and other stuff kind of came in later, but initially it was just a lot of tearing, fissures, you know, sex was extremely painful for me. There was always some bleeding, there was always tearing. So those were my main symptoms. And then there's a small group of folks that are actually asymptomatic. So they have lichen sclerosis, but they're not actually experiencing any of these symptoms. So again, just be mindful that you don't need to actually check off every single symptom in order to have lichen sclerosis. All right, so now I wanna talk a little bit about how to get diagnosed with lichen sclerosis or how lichen sclerosis is diagnosed. So typically you're diagnosed one of two ways, either through a clinical examination or through a biopsy. Now, while biopsies tend to be the gold standard for diagnosing lichen sclerosis, many, many people are diagnosed through clinical examination, myself being one of those. So a clinical examination is when the doctor sits down with you, takes your medical history, listens to all of your symptoms, and then they'll do a clinical examination. So they'll examine the vulva. Um, you know, they'll look at all the different parts, the labia minora, they'll look for any skin changes, um, any textural changes, they'll look to see if there's skin discoloration, if there's bruising and redness, or if there's white color, um, white patches, they'll do all that. Um, they may also take um, like a Q-tip and kind of touch different areas of the vulva, and they're doing this to check for pain and sensitivity, numbness, anything like that. So this is all kind of what's encompassed in a clinical examination. And if the medical provider is confident that, you know, with your history combined with what they're seeing visually upon examination, if they're confident it's LS, they will just probably tell you it's LS and then they move on to 
hopefully educating you um, about what next steps and treatment plan, but often it just involves a quick RX, here's your clobetasol, daily go. Um, different topic for a different video. I digress. Okay. Now, if your doctor performs a clinical examination and they're not sure, they're like, hmm, it could be LS, but it could be something else. I'm really not confident um, in diagnosing this visually. Um, or if they need like a differential diagnosis, which is a process whereby the doctor needs to kind of rule things out um, because there could be multiple conditions that could be causing the symptoms that you have and they need to kind of rule those out. And in these cases, they will um, suggest doing a, a biopsy of the area. Now, this is typically performed um, by something called a punch biopsy, which is where your doctor will use a small handheld kind of circular instrument that will you know, kind of punch, you know, it's a punch biopsy. It's like a little hole punch and they'll take a sample of the tissue approximately four millimeters across. That sample is then sent to pathology and an expert pathologist will kind of take the report and analyze the sample and come back with a diagnosis. Um, biopsies are quite complex and I do plan to do um, quite a few videos on those including you know kind of like you know breaking down the technical jargon around biopsies when biopsies are needed um, and also some videos on aftercare you know what to do after the biopsy what to do before the biopsy um, mental health issues that can come um, from getting biopsies etc so um, but definitely keep your eye out for those. All right, so now I want to address the second question, which is, is lichen sclerosis serious? Now this is, in my opinion, a really important question because it has a lot of consequences for um, people's quality of life and for their health. And I've spoken with a lot of people that feel very frustrated that their doctors downplayed the severity of lichen sclerosis. So a lot of people that I've spoken to told me, you know, my doctor told me she acted like it was nothing. She was just kind of like, oh, it's LS, here's some clobetazole, use it for a couple of weeks and then you're good. And this left the patient with the impression that, okay, so it's not a big deal. It's kind of maybe an infection of sorts, like antibiotics. I take them for my seven days or something, and then I'm fine, you know? And so that's the impression that a lot of patients had. And so they trusted their doctors and they didn't treat it as something that was serious. They did their, you know, their clobetazole or their steroids or whatever they were given, did that for a couple of weeks, and then they just stopped. And during that time where they stopped, unfortunately, their disease progressed. And now they're feeling very frustrated and very upset that their doctors weren't transparent um, with them about what the disease entailed. Um, and, you know, they're really like, I wish they didn't downplay it and treat it as if it was no big deal, when in fact, it, it is a pretty big deal. And the other reason I wanted to address the question was actually just, you know, simply because a lot of people message me and, you know, they either think it could be LS or they just got diagnosed and their doctor didn't tell them much. And what I get asked a lot is, is this serious? How big of a deal is this? Um, and again, this is really important because it has implications for your quality of life and for your health. Now, you know, I, I understand that the term serious is subjective and what's serious for me may not be serious for you so you know i guess kind of take it you know in you know contextualize it within that framework but in my opinion um lichen sclerosis is and should be treated as a serious disease now that said it can be managed and it can be controlled and i will talk about that a bit later on so if this has you feeling a little bit nervous, there is hope, so definitely keep watching. Um, but I do think that it is serious and it, that it needs to be treated seriously because if it's not treated adequately, the problem is that this can lead to some pretty severe side effects or you know outcomes. So let's talk about those really briefly. So one outcome is that it can change if you're not treating, it can change the way your vulva looks. So 
I'm one of those people. Um, I went over 10 years trying to get, you know, trying to be taken seriously by my doctors, um, trying to get a diagnosis, trying to figure out why my body is acting like this. And by the time I did get diagnosed, I had already had significant changes to my vulva. Um, I had quite a lot of fusing around the uh, clitoral glands and the clitoral prepuce, which is the hood. I had lost about three quarters of my labia minora. Um, and by lost, I don't mean they're fused. I mean, they are resorbed completely flush with the labia majora, they're finito. Um, you can, again, watch my terminology series to learn more about resorption and fusing and what the distinction is, but suffice it to say that there can be some pretty significant changes, um, and those changes aren't just aesthetic in some cases. For me, it is aesthetic, but more severe fusing and scarring can lead to some folks having um, partial or complete fusion over their urethra which means you're going to have trouble urinating or an inability to urinate and you're going to need surgery to correct that. You may also have fusing and um, scarring around the vaginal opening and this could make sex extremely painful if not impossible in some cases and again um, I've spoken with folks that have had this and Surgery was required. Uh, I think a couple were treated with laser or laser and surgery, but you know, these are more invasive um, interventions that need to happen at this point because the changes have led to functional issues um, and that are, you know, really detrimental to your health. Um, another big side effect or kind of thing that can happen when you're not treating LS is that it's progressing and as it progresses, it can make sex more and more painful and again you might get to the point where it's just absolutely impossible and you just have to stop kind of altogether. Um, in this case it could be pain from tearing um, because the skin the skin texture changes. I have a whole video on if LS thins and thickens the skin and I explain um, what's going on there and why the skin tears but if you're not treating that disease is just continuing to change the texture of the skin and that's leading to fissures and tearing and bleeding and pain with sex and again this is a functional thing um, and it causes a lot of pain a lot of discomfort and it is really really emotionally and mentally exhausting and distressing and upsetting and this has happened to me also this was one of my main symptoms for the longest time was um, bleeding, tearing, pain with sex. And again, I wasn't treating, right? I went almost a decade without treating something that I had. So it's just getting worse and worse. Um, and then finally, it is important to note, and your doctor should have a discussion about this with you, lichen sclerosis does carry an approximately 2-6% to increase of developing vulvar cancer. Now, I do have um, a blog post on this if you are interested in the connection between LS and vulvar cancer and want to learn more about the literature and what you should look out for to keep you healthy. Um, I will link that in the description box and um, if you're new here, hi, <laughs> um, I do have an ebook that I offer for free. Um, I survey and overview the medical literature, I really break things down, and I have a whole section where I do discuss um, lichen sclerosis and cancer, so you can also get that free copy by going to www.lostlabia slash ebook, and I will leave that description as well, that description in the description. I'll leave that link in the description um, so you can go check that out, um, and then do note that I do have some videos planned um, for 2022 on the topic of vulvar cancer and lichen sclerosis because in my opinion this is a very important topic and something that needs to be discussed and you know I'm all about people being informed and knowing the pros and cons of you know every treatment every intervention you know I think it's really important that we know everything so that you can make informed decisions um, that are best for you and your body. So this is why I think that lichen sclerosis, you know, should be considered serious because there are, are these serious side effects that 
can occur when you are not treating adequately. So I do think it's important to, you know, kind of flag something here. Not everybody that has LS is going to go on to develop severe symptoms. Um, frequently this happens when LS goes untreated for a long time. So again, the, the key here is early intervention and proper protocols and uh, treatments in place early so that we don't get to that stage. Because to me, it's really about, you know, quality of life. Um, so ideally catch it and then treat it and treat it consistently and long term and um you know so that we don't have to you know lose parts of our anatomy so that we don't have to have surgery so that we can urinate or so that we can have penetrative sex um and do know that if you do have some of these symptoms that there are options to to help with them um such as surgery, there are intralesional injections, uh, intralesional steroidal injections, there are different compounding and medication, pain medication, and different therapies you can use. But again, ideally, we don't want to get that bad. We don't want to get to the point where we need these more, um, more intense kind of interventions, right? We want to kind of mitigate that and kind of stay closer to this side of the spectrum where things are milder. Um, and so, you know, I really, you know, I hope that in the future, this is a conversation that occurs more frequently between patient and, you know, medical provider, where the medical provider is not treating it as just something like strep throat or, you know, a little minor ear infection, take this ear, I don't know, I haven't had an ear infection since I was like a swimmer and a kid. So like, I don't remember, but you know, like an easy two week fix and then you're done. Um, I'd really love to see um, doctors informing their patients about what lichen sclerosis is, the long-term risks, the importance of proper, consistent, and long-term treatment and management. And I'd also like to see conversations about risks. And I don't just mean the risks of lichen sclerosis, I mean the risks of the medications they provide. Because no treatment is without no risk whatsoever. And I think patients need to know the pros and cons you know, the, the risks and the benefits and kind of weigh those for themselves. Um, so I'd like to see more transparency in the doctor's office and I'd like to see the disease being treated more seriously um, because it can have very serious physical and mental health side effects. So that said, I do want to kind of close on a more positive note. If you've hung with me this far, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, so I do want to say that you know, when it's diagnosed, if you are treated properly and educated properly, this is a disease that can be managed, controlled, and you can even get into remission. Um, so I do have a whole video on, you know, the difference where I talk about um, remission and what it means and all of that. So I will link that in the description box below. And do note that I do have quite a few videos planned on the topic of remission for uh, 2022. Um, some videos where I'm really going to dive deep into the, the medical literature. So, you know, kind of breaking down some of the technical jargon and what the evidence says. I'm going to do some more personal videos where I talk about my personal experience with remission. Um, a video on all the things I did to get myself in remission, how I stay in remission. So it's going to be lots, um, lots of content on that, but note that it is possible to get into remission. But again, remission does not equal cure. Um, you still have lichen sclerosis. So again, long-term management is important. And that's why I personally choose to continue my treatment despite being in remission for over a year and a half. Um, so, you know, like, if you followed my my story, if you've watched my diagnosis story, you'll know that I had incredibly painful sex, like excruciatingly painful. And um, I had fusing, I had all of these things. It was really, really bad by the time I got diagnosed. But now I have no symptoms whatsoever. I don't even think about LS if it wasn't for like doing so much work in the LS community and space, but I, with respect to my own body, it just, it's not really a big thing for me anymore. I go swimming, I exercise, I dance, I have sex, I do all the things I wanna do, um, and then some, and I have no symptoms. 
So it is possible to get there, but it is important to, you know, treat and to treat consistently and to stay on a long-term treatment plan. So I do use a maintenance protocol, which means twice a week for me. So I use my steroid on Monday night and Thursday night and that's it, we're done. Um, but that is a possibility. So it is still possible to live a great quality of life. Um, it takes some work, it takes some time. Trust me, it takes some time. Gotta be patient. Um, I mean, some people it happens really quick, but for me it did not. Took quite a lot of time and effort, but I got there and I'm here. Um, so I just want you to know that while it is serious and you should take it seriously, there also is a lot of hope. So that's it for this video. If you found anything helpful, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you learned anything new. If you want to share a bit of your story, feel free. Um, if you have questions for me, also please drop those in the comments. And then finally, if you have requests for videos, be it a topic, a question, if you want um, certain technical terms uh, defined and explained, I can add those to my terminology series. I do have a spreadsheet where I keep all of you know my video requests, my content requests. So please let me know. So that's it for this one. I will catch you in the next one.